So we are going to change channels slightly. I believe we're going to come forward in time a bit. I think the Song of the Seven Dragons comes from an earlier time. The Song of the Thirteen Ghost Points, or as it is classically referred to, the Ode of the Thirteen Ghost Points, is a protocol that involves 13 points, some of which are bilateral. So it's actually more than that when you're actually using it. It was, it was written and compiled into a treatment protocol in the 6th century AD by someone by the name of Sun Simiao, who was um, to the Chinese medicine what Heraclitus was to Western medicine. He's considered the father of Chinese medicine. His great passion was ethics. No, no surprise. He wrote, in the end, what we call it the Hippocratic Oath, the Chinese vow of service as a physician. It was written by Sun Simiao. He grew up in Shanghai. He grew up in a time where people from many, many different traditions were crossing through Shanghai. He grew up in a time of conversation between traditions. And he... Um, He's also known, interestingly, for having done some of the, his studies with people who worked with sorcery, breaking curses, working in old world understanding of illness and how illness formed. He was ill as a child and um, he learned the tradition of Chinese medicine to teach his physicians how to cure him. So they say he was a savant, probably not. He probably just was extremely intelligent and directed. But he had the tradition in his hands by the age of 20. And he's a tremendous human being. He wrote enormous volumes about Chinese medicine. A lot of the work with ghosts and with curses, with possession, with worms, um, is in a, a, a volume of his work entitled The Lung. So he, 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 he was an alchemist. He was repeatedly, um, the people in the, in the capital tried to woo him out of the country into the city. He was a great physician, so people wanted his expertise. But he most often was out in, his, out in, the, in the regions. Um, he was an alchemist who worked with substance, poisons, as well as uh, with vibrations. The, the, the Song of the Thirteen Ghost Points is, through Sun Simiao, is attributed to a mythical physician called the Bird Physician around the time of 500 BC. So whenever it gets to the Bird Physician, you, you're entering mythical time. So is it that through the Bird Physician certain aspects of the tradition were seeded from another world? Or is it that they were carried in, in times where people weren't writing things down? Don't know. In any event, um, the Song of the Thirteen Ghost Points can and is used as a protocol to, for depossession. It, it walks you step by step in how a human being is taken to death physically, mentally, and spiritually. The 13 ghost points reverses that process. It is the realm of miracles. They say if you are not prepared to work with 100% faith, don't bother. Depending on the tradition and how this song is given to you, your way of, of working with it would be different. I, I was given this song as a way of working with the undue influence of life upon you. So this would be, in a conversation we were having this morning, the difference between obsession and possession. 
because J.R. Worsley brought the Song of the Seven Dragons to the West, 99.9% of the time when there is a possession, I work with that protocol. I don't work with the, the Song of the Thirteen Ghost Points for that. Saying that, however, there are a few instances where it would be preferable. For instance, if there was a level of possession that accompan was accompanied by terrible trauma, there is the possibility of being able to unravel the undue influence of the aggression of another human or the cold in the house where something occurred. There, there, there might be a way, I can imagine a time when I would choose that. As a general rule, I work with the Song of the Thirteen Ghost Points either when there isn't a possession or after the possession is cleared. The Thirteen Ghost Points is most certainly a song. It is also most certainly a mathematical equation. It is classically used in a particular shape of trinities. Three plus three plus three plus three plus one. Now that one, depending on the person, depending on the level that, that the, the yin, the darkness, the disturbance, the, the perversity has rooted, depending on where that is, you may add that extra one somewhere else. You might do three, three, one, three, three. You might do one, three, 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 three. I have generally mostly used this protocol as uh, a complete protocol done in parts. That is my most common way of working with it. I have worked with it one point at a time over a year to a year and a half with someone. Um, I rarely use it in twos. I have tended, you could, you just have to have a little bit of sophistication working with numbers. Um, but commonly it's in threes. Occasionally you'll do five plus five plus three, or just five. You can sometimes work at five. Anyway, these are the details of how it's worked. Jeffrey Yuan teaches the 13 ghost points again and again and again, and he walks you through each time in a slightly different way. What is emphasized even more than with the Song of the Seven Dragons is that to be in, to be in a position to bring this medicine to a patient, you are 100% willing to be trained by it. The 13 Ghost Points is a process of being reduced to your essence. It's a very demanding training. It is not a training most people would choose to undergo. To be capable of undo, unraveling the undue influence of television on the mind. Your mind has to have been unraveled to the point that you can be an instrument of differentiation between the two. Right? So if your mind is all TV, you're not going to be able to be used as an instrument because you won't know the difference. Right? This is a, a, a sort of a dull example, but it'll give you the point. The the At the hand of a trained practitioner, the Song of the Thirteen Ghost Point sings the sound of the human's cry to heaven. Please help me. Heaven's response arrives from the first covenant like rain, washing away the distortions, malformations, atrocities that cover the original gift of life. If you were raised in a time of war. Though you cannot remember who you are separate from the war, you are not that war. So the 13 ghost points is through the hand and the heart and the eye of the practitioner that can stand in the resonance of your true nature 
Now you can't talk about someone's true nature any more than you could talk about the true nature of a milkweed pod. Right? <laughs> you can paint it, you can make a gesture, you could possibly sing a note, you could laugh and express the true nature of the milk pod, milkweed pod, but you couldn't actually describe it. You would lose it. So it's the same with the 13 ghost points. It is classically used for mental, dis, uh, mental illness. The song of the ode of the 13 ghost points at the top of it says for mental disorders. Sun Simiao was really quite famous for that, which wasn't necessarily what people thought of when they thought of medicine at that time. So it is possible to enter into the darkness that is holding something and transform that. to vanquish the power of ghosts. My experience clinically with the 13 ghost points is the ghosts are not just personal memory. They are also familial memory, ancestral memory, and in some cases even the memory of the earth. You learn to atone for your errors when you become a practitioner of the 13 ghost points. It is not a path of innocence. It's a path of repentance. It's a path of poverty. It's a path of um, clarity. The, the Song of the 13 Ghost Points, there are places in this ode that I would say are the closest thing in Chinese medicine to surgery of anything. The, the points are many, the needling is very intricate, difficult, generally painful. You are using heat and needle and, um, and the relationship of heaven to earth to dispel things. It's quite forceful, this protocol. It does not let you stand back as a practitioner. There is absolutely no um, tourism of any sort in this protocol. You know, when you're learning this protocol, you do spend time with your patients explaining this, that there is a process of the practitioner's vehicle being changed. The fifth ghost point is called Ghost Road. What you learn at the fifth ghost point is how to stand up to yourself. Now, the patient, I'll tell you a story about Ghost Road. If you think about the progression of addiction, Ghost Road is that place where the addiction has you to the degree that you're driving home and saying, I'm not going to the liquor store. I'm not going to the liquor store. I'm not going to stop and get potato chips. I'm not going to whatever. And the next thing you know, your car is there. That's Ghost Road. The ghosts, the hauntings, are driving the car, are walking you on the road, despite all your good intentions. You know, it's the kind of thing where you say, I'll be there at 5, and you come home at 9. And your family's like, where the heck have you been? And you're actually mad at them for being upset. Like, that's what happens when, when you, the progression of the ghost. By five, you're not making many decisions about where you're going. You're working on compulsion by five. That's five. So imagine what 13 is like. So what a practitioner is learning is at five is to stand up to oneself. Let's talk about physical things. So, there are certain illnesses that happen because of an accumulation of fluids, of toxicity, of memories, of... Um, there's a certain way that the human begins to clutch. And I mean this physically, I mean this mentally. 
the spirits themselves don't get sick. What happens is the spirits are actually scattered some. So the mind and the body start holding things. Now, for instance, I'm thinking one of the times that that is not sickness is pregnancy. If a woman becomes pregnant, the body immediately starts accumulating yin. It's accumulating fluids to protect and nourish the infant. If, however, after the birth, the, women, the woman can't lose weight or the fluid retention still stays bad. So the 13 ghost points, very often you will think of even in physical situations where something is progressing. The yin is accumulating. Someone is getting to retirement and they are getting more and more afraid of not having what they want. This is a pathological condition. Aging should be about being less afraid of losing things. You know, there's a time when the accumulation makes sense. You have young babies, you want to accumulate. But as you age, the natural process of nature is that things get simpler, simpler. We're in a culture where it's going the absolute opposite direction, right? So at the mental level, all of us could use the 13 ghost points. Um, the most common way that I think about using them is with addiction and with trauma, what we call PTSD. You actually go backwards, down and back in, and then you come forward again. Jeffrey Yuan teaches that you can actually get to the place where you are able to diagnose the root in which case you would work with the first trinity and the trinity where the root is. And you could, through moxa and needling, free the person. This is a protocol that something can happen right now. Someone comes back into the present. Something is transformed. My experience as a practitioner is just that it has been a gradual process of being trained how to use this protocol. And with that comes the training of the mind, training to the ability to speak with someone, walking back, walking in. It's really in. You go yin, you go deeper. It's, it's a little bit like going on an ancient journey to the underworld. Something is found, something is lost, and you are returned. And I'm speaking now as the practitioner. Strange and wonderful things happen in the 13 ghost points. You start the process with someone who has chronic migraine headaches. And the history, you walk back with the person. And there's a history of depression. You keep walking back. There were terrible, terrible fevers repeatedly in early life. You know, you're starting to collect a story. You're going back in time. So you've done quite a lot of work with the person already. The migraines have not fundamentally shifted by working with the movement of the seasons at the level of the constitution. So you think the ghost point. So you start on this walk back. Now what happens is the most obvious thing that changes is the person falls madly in love and starts a life in the middle of this process. Never, never had this experience before. Something let go. Something you weren't going for, but something in the heart let go. And voila, the world opened. Now you're still going back because of the headaches, right? You follow a map. The 13 ghost points, you don't have to make too many decisions once you're in them. It's already written. It's already walked. It's far more intelligent than you'll ever be. It's historical in the sense, and when Jeffrey Yuan teaches this, he te teaches lots and lots about the history of China and how we got to this place. It's a, it's a protocol that understands 
how we take ourselves out with our own desires, our own terrors. It, it understands how the human mind works. It, none of these points on their, well, not none of them, but many of them on their own, you wouldn't necessarily associate with working with the mind this much, but as a group, you're there instantly as a practitioner and a patient. The 13 ghost points, like almost all spiritual paths, works with breaking one's attachment to things. Most of the distress in our mind, the root of it is attachment. We want something to be something it isn't. We're attached to something in the past we may or may not have any consciousness of that's creating a constant hunger. They, they are very psychological, but you... So it's a funny thing, because Western practitioners, most of us have a, either a lot of training already or we're very interested in psychological work. 13 ghost points, you, could, you can do that. You will be talking with people this way. But I try to stay as close to nature as I can with it. It's, it changes the way you think. It changes the nature of your relationship to a patient. There are places where you, if you are able, are asked to get between a patient and their mind. Now this is, if you are a physical surgeon, to get between the sternum and a person's heart. This is what it feels like. Talk about afraid as a practitioner, when you realize that the protocol itself will, care, will lead you to the difference between a person and their mind. You, you start to experience the illusion of the mind. Whether you're the patient or the practitioner, really either, it depends. I mean, this is a protocol I would talk to the, to the patient about in depth. Now, I wouldn't use the word possession if I was doing that, but I would talk about the capacity for transformation. I would talk about those things that alone we don't know how to change, but through time. If you don't know how to interact with your patient with the 13 ghost points, you're not going to get as far in. It's very, very relational. You very often, you you know, your invitation to talk to someone be, would be often strange compulsions. I've used this very effectively with people with crippling, um, what is that called when, when, you're, when you get enclosed in something? Claustrophobia. Claustrophobia. Um, very effectively, because it's an emotional cause of disease, and very often it's earlier than they can speak. So through the 13 ghost points, you move back down and through. Yin, when something's, when we are approaching death and contracting, Right? Everything gets smaller. We get more afraid. There are fewer choices. The, the Taoist tradition of medicine is about flipping that, becoming more young as you die, so that it is possible on the day of your death to step over the little creek to the other world. It is possible to have let go that much. This is a wonderful thing to do with people in the end of life. If, if you're prepared to be with them with it. You can't just do these points any more than you can, really any, but as a protocol. It, you, you are let in, my experience in training in it is, you usually can work one or two points further into the song than you can live yet. If your position as a physician is clear. You can be of service further into the work than you are able to live, but not way further. Because the vehicle is actually changed to use these points. Your nervous system has changed. The actual physical experience of standing on your two feet changes in this protocol. It, it, Jeffrey Yuen talks about it as a protocol of cultivation. Uh, it's a stern master. 
it's very strange to me to hear some of the sort of collective conversations about the 13 ghost points. Um, it's not my experience that you can just use one here for this problem or use this one here for this problem. I don't know if that's because my root training was working at the level of the cause of illness. I'm not sure, but it makes, I have a hard time understanding it because without the internal cultivation, my experience is the ghost point does not open. Um, and when the ghost point opens, it's a completely different experience than the experience of the host point. It's kind of like if you go into a movie theater and you give your ticket and then there's multiple theaters to go into. It's like to go into Do 26 Middle of Man is an entirely different experience than the very same point as Ghost Palace. Now, over time, you start to develop a relationship of the two, but they are completely separate. And my experience is the ghost point doesn't open with the cultivation, without the cultivation. Um, again, my experience of that cultivation has happened at the hand of relationships with teachers. Um, I do think there's a way that you can get into the protocol to a certain level on your own. Um, I think you can get to the first five points on your own if you have a rigorous practice in your life. That that is emptying you. I do believe that's possible. I think it's quite difficult when you get further on um, because it, it it works so deeply in the mind of the practitioner. It 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 has no. Um, it doesn't knock on the door before it starts working with you. And so without a relationship either with a very competent colleague who's really next to you, walking, or a teacher, I think it would be hard to get further down the road than five to 16, maybe, not quite sure. I've had help pretty much at every turn. Um, a lot of people are talking about the 13 ghost points. I understand why they are. We are a besought culture that is getting more and more and more. Materialism at the collective level has seriously changed our idea of health, of well-being, of success, of illness. Um, addictions and compulsions in strange and weird ways. Teenagers find it totally bizarre to go for a walk now. Um, so a lot of the ways we naturally uh, cleaned ourselves out, we're not doing now. We're on um, cell phones and in all our free time, we're not going out and looking at the sky. Goodness, we're not even going out and having a smoke very much anymore, right? Which is how a lot of people sorted their mind out. They went back to heaven. They went out and had a smoke and looked at the sky. That's taboo. You know, we it's very, very difficult for people to actually empty themselves. Um, more and more people are doing work that's mental as opposed to having a physical level to it. So the minds are getting very, very cluttered. And then if you think of the earth herself and our relationship to it, the level of trauma is ongoing. So that's the larger context, I think. Um, there's quite a lot of teaching about different kinds of ghosts. There are wandering ghosts and sexual ghosts. They call them horny ghosts. Um, there are ghosts associated with gluttony. <laughs> There are all these warnings in the classics when you travel, you can come home sick and it's understood to be a wandering ghost. 13 ghost points are very good for restoring function. Um, for five element acupuncturists that work um, with the causative factor, you can also work with 13 ghost points as part of that. Go, the, 
ghost points that are, that are associated with the causative factor can be integrated into treatment. Um, it's an extremely flexible song. It will take the shape of whatever is needed to get to the root. The, the missing piece is the development of the practitioner to be the instrument of it. Um, I have not... One of the biggest difficulties in working with mental illness is that I actually believe we could treat it more effectively than we do. The problem is, is that when the mind gets ill, it frequently goes off by itself. There's a so I have never treated someone with full schizophrenia, not because I don't think I could help them, but because it hasn't the person hasn't stayed in treatment. So it's probably my problem, but it's something I've noticed. This is a protocol that you can go into the fractures in the mind. Now the it's the resonance of the points. It's the it's the ability to go into the yin and be transformed into light that is what goes into the cracks. It's not you as say a psychoanalyst with a needle going in there. You're not doing that. You're following the Tao. You're following the current of the song in as far as you are able to go with someone. Um, recently we had an experience with someone we actually just did one ghost point with them. They had a terrible, terrible trauma at about the age of 12 and had lost all memory in the two or three years before and after the trauma. The person's now grown, has a life, but this thing. And what happened was the ghost point opened to the root and then and then we went actually to her constitution and what was possible was to go to the place where that happened in her. And I was at the needle and I was teaching so I actually allowed you to see what it felt like to, to be an instrument at that place where this terrible, terrible single event happened. And it was, it was an extraordinary experience of being with someone. And it finished and we went on. And now the person's starting to come back into the rhythm. They're noticing different things. They're noticing a completely different state of mind. The body's starting to change. Something that was held in time. The 13 ghost points got us there. Quite remarkable. Like a, a Western surgeon, though, if we hadn't done the work of, of identifying that as a reason for doing the ghost points. It's like, if you don't know where the tumor is, you don't just start cutting. <laughs> Right, as a Western, so you don't use the knife to find the tumor. With with the ghost points, there's a con there's a lot of diagnostics that come before it. Understanding the nature of of how things have been layered, and deeper and deeper understanding of the capacity of each of the points. My experience clinically is, is that the ghost points work gestationally. I've never heard anyone teach that, but over and over and over again, something really is completely shifted within nine months of finishing the 13 ghost points. It's interesting to me that it's done in trinities. It's like it's done in trimesters. And they often say human babies are born, you know, early so the head can get through. So it's, it's, it's as if we were four trimesters in utero. Um, I don't know what the classics would say about that. That's just something I've noticed almost to the day. You know, I've used this with people who can't get pregnant for when I think that there's internal causes, emotional causes for the infertility. And nine months after they're pregnant, it's happened three times in my practice. Um, you know, you. I've also done the 13 ghost points without a tremendous result because it obviously wasn't 
the protocol. You learn through your mistakes. You, but when you are present, you see what needs to be done in 13 ghost points. Roses will grow out of rocks. Remarkable, incredibly powerful protocol. I, um, I feel like I'm at the very, very beginning of being able to work with this protocol. And I was told that it would be possible at the end of the day to only use this protocol to treat all illness because it has to do with breaking the illusion of life. One point, one minute at a time. And th that who we are and who we think we are are not the same. And illness very often is rooted in that difference. So the ghost points unravel that. Um, Deep, deep, deep experiences of terror, inexplicable terror that someone has lived with. You can follow it with the ghost points. Sometimes you would do it all at once, and sometimes you'd go very, very, very slowly, building relationship. That's a clinical decision that you would make based on the person and your capacity. And are you going to treat someone every day? Are you going to treat them once a week for 10 years? Um, it would be wonderful if we could do residential care with the 13 ghost points. That would be absolutely fantastic. If you could do residential care for the mind, that you could work with different times of day, that you could stay in this protocol, that the practitioner and the patient were unraveled together in different ways for different reasons. It, you know, This is how we could reach some of the absolute intense mental distress of this time is with the 13 ghost points. You have to be willing to talk to people about what's holding their mind captive. So that can be tricky. We defend our poisons. We defend our addictions. We defend... You can work with the 13 ghost points over many years with someone until one day the conversation can be had requires a tremendous amount of strength to be undone in service to others. You do not, you know, there might be a tiny bit of affirmation at the first point for having the guts to get into the training. After that, affirmation just gets in your way. Because it really is, a, it's a process of losing um, Losing the ego.